viewers, welcome back to Let's Play Free Space 2. When we last left off, the command appears to have let Bosch and his frigate the Iceni escape. I let all my wingmen die. I barely managed to hold off two cruisers long enough for a destroyer to come and blow them up with some Vasudan reinforcements, and my ship was at 5% health. Logically, it's time for my promotion! So viewers, without further ado, let's continue on in the world of Free Space 2, right after everything loads. Welcome to the 107th Ravens, pilot. I'm Lieutenant Samza, Thank squadron you. leader. Hi. As you know, the Aquitaine is now en route to the Gamma Draconis system. The details of the situation there have been classified at the highest level. So I'm as much in the dark as you are. Of course. The Admiral will brief the crew when we reach 3rd Fleet Headquarters in Capella. Man, it must suck to live in this universe and just be on a planet. Something terrible happened. We don't know anything about it. News at 11. Except there won't be any, because we don't know anything about it. You know, I just bet they just... Everyone keeps their heads down and tries to live their life without even thinking about it. The 107th is a heavy assault squadron, so our fighter of choice is the Hercules Mark II. Implementing advances in fusion drive technology, the Mark II improves the assault fighter's speed and maneuverability without sacrificing loadout. The Herc has only two missile banks, but its ordnance capacity is greater than the Myrmidons. The original Herc won the Great War, so we're proud to carry on the tradition. And Lieutenant Sam says already getting on my bad side by lying. The Herc does indeed sacrifice loadouts, specifically gun mounts. You're not putting up as much fire from primaries as you are in the original, which is unfortunate, especially in higher difficulties. Now, the maneuverability and speed is nice. You're less of a sitting duck, but I miss my firepower, viewers. I recommend that you review the Herc 2 training modules before the Aquitaine arrives in Capella. No. These modules review advanced tactics, such as countermeasures and energy management. Yeah. The Herc 2 is slower than the Myrmidon you've been flying with the 53rd, so learn how to evade missiles and equalize shields. These skills will help you push your fighter to the limits, master them, and the life you save may be your own. This guy's pretty intense. I think he needs to switch to decaf. According to your file, you are now authorized to use the GTW-5A Prometheus-R, the GTM-19 Harpoon, and the GTM-4 Hornet Missile. The Prometheus-R is a retrofit of a cannon developed during the Great War. After the Alliance lost contact with Earth, we lacked materials required for mass production, so engineers developed this retrofit version. The Prometheus packs a bigger wallop than the Subak HL-7, but it will drain your power reserves with extended use. Actually, it'll drain your power reserves, which, with pretty much the first use, I'm not a big fan of the retrofit cannon in this game, unfortunately. The Harpoon and the Hornet are both aspect-seeking missiles. While the Harpoon fires individual warheads, the Hornet launches a swarm of four projectiles, eight if you're in double-fire mode. The training modules cover the proper technique for firing aspect-seeking missiles, so be sure to review that section carefully. That's all for now, pilot. The Aquitaine will arrive in Capella in four hours. It's kind of apparent he expects you to review things right now. So without further ado... Welcome to Training Simulator Module TSM-107M, Advanced Qualification for the Hercules Mark II Heavy Assault Fighter. This module has been designed to acquaint pilots with communication systems, countermeasures, and aspect-seeking missiles. Let me guess, it's no substitute for battlefield experience. TSM units are approved for use as part of the GTVA Combat Training Program or as a review for qualified pilots. The TSM series is not intended as a substitute for actual field training. Yay, I love being right. Welcome to Module TSM-107M, Pilot. Don't touch the controls until you are told to do so. You will fail this session if you do not follow instructions carefully. Look at that texture. Let's begin That's with fantastic. messaging. For Class A qualification, you learned how to call in a support ship to rearm and repair subsystems. Now, we'll show you how to give orders to pilots under your command. Our target for this simulation will be an Argo-class transport. Target the transport. Good. Now you'll call in your reinforcements. Press the communications key to bring up the messaging window. Select reinforcements. Well done. 
Confirm that you still have the transport targeted. Mm -hmm. Now have Epsilon Wing destroy the transport. Roger that, sir. Press the I'm communications key to bring up your messaging box again. Select There's well done, pilot. Let's try this again. It's kind of fun to watch blow up, though. Boom. Order Epsilon Way now. Press that, the sir. one key, Engaging your and Epsilon will destroy your target. As you can see, the Prometheus fires a lot slower than the Subak. It's almost a sniping weapon, except it doesn't do good damage work. to justify Be it. Be aware that fighter wings are less effective against larger targets. Bombers or vessels with beam turrets are usually required to destroy warships larger than cruiser class. Also note that reinforcements are not always available, and you will have authorization to issue orders only to specific wings and ships. Now, let's order Epsilon Wing to depart. Press the communications key to bring up the messaging window. Select two you don't have to for tell Wing me twice. and one for Epsilon. Finally, press zero for depart. I'm so ahead of the curve. Excellent work. As you gain experience in combat, using the communications interface will become second nature. Hey. All right, pilot. Now it's time to learn about countermeasures. You can totally see the when pilot When you launch there. a countermeasure, you present a new target for pursuing missiles. That's awesome. In theory, in the missile target. should hit the countermeasure fire. instead of ripping a hole through your hull. You need to use countermeasures to survive in battle, but you'll soon learn this tactic does not always work. When you die. For this exercise, we'll bring in a Leviathan-class cruiser. The cruiser will now launch missiles at you. Press the countermeasures key to evade the missiles. Immediately increase your forward velocity to maximum and move away from the pursuing missiles. Punch your afterburners to gain that extra burst of speed. So far, this isn't working out very well. I'm when bad the at missile this. is nearly upon you, launch the countermeasure. Listen to the beeping sound of the missile lock to gauge the distance of the missile. The quicker the beeps, the closer the missile. While launching countermeasures, turn your fighter hard in sharp movements. This will also help throw the missile off your trail. If you evade the missile, an indicator will display in the upper portion of your targeting reticle. This will alert you to the fact that you successfully avoided the projectile. The number of countermeasures remaining is indicated on your HUD below the weapon's display. If you run out of countermeasures, call in the support ship to reload. That was a clean miss. That's that enough for evading missiles. Now, let's practice firing oh, them. Oh, thank goodness. No. Your Hercules Mark II heavy assault fighter is armed with two banks of harpoons. Up. Unlike heat seekers like the Rock Eye, you must acquire a lock on your target in order for an aspect seeker to home. However, the Aspect Seeker is well worth the effort because its homing ability is much stronger. As was just demonstrated. If a Heat Seeker loses track of its target, chances are it will not reacquire lock. Aspect Seekers, on the other hand, will track their targets until they detonate. Transport 3 is now entering. Let's take this opportunity to learn another targeting control. You have a reticle targeting control that will acquire the nearest object inside your reticle. Maneuver your fighter so that my ship is centered on your good. Now, well done. Now, target Get transport three using the reticle targeting control. Make sure the transport is in excellent. Now, let's see how you do with those harpoons. Notice the red indicator moving towards your target. That's the aspect triangle. Once it is moved onto your target, you'll see the lock indicator. This means your harpoons are locked and ready to fire. Do I, do I get to now, no. fire one oh. harpoon at the freighter. No, I'm firing two. Note how fast the harpoon moves. This warhead delivers quite a punch. You're not the boss of me. A round of harpoons can be fired every three seconds. Fire another round and note the countdown timer in your weapons gauge. The harpoon is almost useless if fired before lock has been acquired. That's a major distinction between the harpoon and the rock eye. It'll still arm, but it won't track. Now, unload your harpoons until you've destroyed Transport 3. Oh 
more salvo? No. And that's that. Boom. Excellent job. Let's see how you do against now. moving targets. Please stand by. In order to gain aspect lock on a moving target, you must keep the target's lockbox in a fixed position inside your HUD reticle. We'll now bring in the fighter drones. When the first drone enters, target it and acquire lock. Try to keep the target indicator in the center of your HUD reticle. Once you have acquired well done, all aspect seekers function this way, I'm from awesome. the Hornet missile to the Helios torpedo. In general, the larger and more powerful the warhead, the longer it will take to acquire lock and countdown between volleys. Now, let's have you face a real challenge. Multiple wings will appear simultaneously. Destroy them all. Rearming complete, sir. It's You're good really to go. You must be in range of your target before you can gain aspect lock. Hit your burners to intercept the drones. You guys are basically within 100 feet of me, so why should I even bother? I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to... Here, you're not even, I'm not even targeting you. I'm still going to kill you. Because you guys like smashing into me for some reason. Oh, well, I guess you are just AI drones, so what was I expecting, honestly? Still, enjoy. Just let's dumb fire these. Whoosh! Aw. Oh. Maybe now? Whoosh! No, what now? Whoosh! There you go. Yeah, they are kind of useless, because they, they don't fly as fast as Tempests. Well Still. done! This concludes module TSM-107M. Engage your subspace shields, drive to end this simulation. Oh. So again, I'll rehash for you and I, viewers, but a solid training mission overall. They should have the drones stay further out, but... Well done, pilot. You have successfully completed TSM-107M advanced qualification for the Hercules Mark II heavy assault fighter. You are advised to proceed to Training Simulator Module TSM-107SE, covering shield management and the energy transfer system. Special Edition? I don't know what SE means. Oh, well. Welcome to Training Simulator Module TSM-107SE, advanced qualification for the Hercules Mark II Heavy Assault Fighter. This module has been designed to acquaint pilots with shield management and the energy transfer system. Guess what? TSM units, units are approved for use as part of the GTBA combat, combat training program, program or as a review for qualified pilots. pilots. The, TSM the TSM series is not intended as a substitute for actual field training. training. Not valid in Oklahoma, some restrictions may apply. Welcome to module TSM-107SE, pilot. Don't touch the controls until you are told to do so. You will fail this session if you do not follow instructions carefully. First, yeah, let's take a look at the gauges and controls for your shield system. The Alliance acquired shielding technology from the Shivans during the Great War. Shield systems have been standard on Terran Vasudan fighters and bombers for over 30 years. Now you know. Your shield system generates an energy shell that protects the hull of your ship from primary fire and missile blasts. As they absorb damage, your shields will weaken. However, your fighter will automatically regenerate its shields over time. Your shield integrity gauge is located in the lower right of your HUD. This gauge is now flashing. Your shield is divided into four quadrants. Each quadrant can withstand limited damage. When a shield quadrant sustains damage, the corresponding section of your shield integrity gauge will flash. Observe. Oh, my shields! Note Bastard. the front of your shield is flashing as if you've taken a hit. Observe how the gauge changes as your shield sustains more damage. When a shield quadrant has been destroyed, all damage on that quadrant will impact the hull of your fighter. Your shields will regenerate themselves automatically. Let's accelerate this process to save time. Oh, thank God. At least I'm Now observe that. as the front quadrant of your shield repairs itself to full strength. It was actually almost at full strength, because I devoted all my energy to shields. Your shield is now fully recharged. Effective Yay. shield management can mean the difference between life and death. So true. The simplest way to manage your shield is the equalize quadrants function. That's the Q button I, I have damaged repeatedly. your front quadrant again. 
Use your Equalize Quadrants function to repair your shield. Well done. Your front section has been partially recharged. This shield energy came from your other three quadrants. Practice this function often. Especially under flak fire. I'm now going to reduce most of your shield strength. Note that three of your four quadrants are now near zero power. With your shield management controls, you can maximize shield strength in a specific quadrant. First, maximize the strength in your front quadrant. Well done. Note that your front quadrant is at full strength, while the other quadrants have been drained. Maximizing your front shield quadrant is especially useful when you're attacking the turret of a large ship. Which is part of my job. As now I want you to maximize your rear shield quadrant. Already done. If you're pursuing an important objective and are being attacked from the rear, maximizing your rear shield quadrant can deflect the gunfire of your pursuer. Now, equalize quadrants again to distribute shield energy evenly around your ship. We will conclude this module with an overview of your energy transfer system, or ETS. In the lower right of your HUD are three bar gauges labeled G for guns, S for shields, and E for engines. Stop talking. You can use your ETS controls to augment or diminish the energy allocated to each of these three systems. First, let's increase your weapon's energy allocation. Observe that as you divert power to weapons, the energy levels for shields and engines drop. Yes. The more energy diverted to weapons, the faster your primaries will recharge. Your weapons will not inflict greater damage at higher ETS levels. The rave, viewers. The space High rave. energy cannons, such as the Prometheus, can quickly deplete your weapon reserves. If you require a sustained barrage of gunfire, diverting energy to primaries may be necessary. Now, let's increase your shield allocation. The higher your ETS setting for shields, the faster they'll recharge. Increasing your shield allocation may be critical in combat situations, such as stopping to rearm your fighter or flying through heavy flak. Now, divert more power to your engines. Increasing power to engines will improve your maximum speed by up to 30%, depending on the fighter's reactor capacity. Your afterburners will also recharge faster, enabling more frequent bursts of speed. For a slower fighter like the Hercules Mark II, Increasing engine power may be necessary to chase down more maneuverable targets or cover large distances quickly. Well done. This concludes module TSM-107SE. Engage your subspace drive to end this simulation. Pretty well paced. I know why they split these up because, let's face it, going through six or five tutorial missions in a row would be a little much even for me. That's like Dragon Shard levels of tutorial hell. But... This is all stuff that would be really important right off the bat, especially when you flight, sorry, fight the two cruisers in that mission that are hitting you with flak, which usually tends to deplete all your shield quadrants equally. Congratulations! Thank you, you have successfully completed TSM 107 SE Advanced Qualification for the Hercules Mark II Heavy Assault Fighter. Excellent. I am now the king of parallel parking. Viewers, I hope you enjoyed the story bits of that. Um, Again, more than anything, this is just completionist. Maybe I'm hoping for another Wings badge. That would be cool. But as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time with some actual gameplay, just for a change. See you then.